Time to welcome in our Premier League insider, David Ornstein. Uh, David, let's begin this way. COVID protocols uh, are ever-changing. They're top of mind for all of us. What's the latest? Well, the latest news on the ground here today, Paul, is that in the last week, the Premier League recorded 103 positive COVID tests. That's a new record among players and staff at the 20 clubs. But it must be said that there were more than 15,000 tests, which is also a record. What it does present is a concerning picture, of course. Omicron is spreading like wildfire among the clubs, it would seem. Uh, and it's led to the postponement of 15 matches. It's led to questions about the integrity of competition with clubs like Manchester United and Tottenham three games behind some of their rivals. It's led to calls for players to take up the vaccine because the rate has been lower among Premier League players than those in other countries such as Germany, Italy, France and Spain. It's led to managers like Ralph Ranjet questioning, should the League Cup, the Carabao Cup, be scrapped? Should English tradition um, dictate that we have an easing of fixtures over this period? Well, he said, don't go that far. That's almost like suggesting abolishing the Queen. But there have been some more practical suggestions, like should five substitutes be brought in? The big clubs like Liverpool, Jurgen Klopp, their manager, are pushing hard for it. But it would take 14 votes among Premier League clubs. And they're not Getting that at the moment, they're struggling. Klopp says it's down to the likes of Burnley, who don't feel they need five substitutes, that it would create an unfair advantage. So we'll see what happens with that. All rosy in the Premier League garden. Let's combine Newcastle with the rapidly approaching January transfer window. What do you think their approach will be there? I think it's going to be a minor miracle now if Newcastle survive. And what might give them hope is if they succeed in the January window. And by succeed, I mean bringing in quality players that can boost their chances because they're in a perilous situation. They've got Steve Nixon, the head of recruitment. They're working alongside Amanda Staveley on behalf of the ownership and Eddie Howe, of course, as head coach, to bring in some players. They're working hard. They're lining up targets. The likes of Kieran Trippier is a player they admire. Uh, Sven Botman, I've reported too, of Lille. Uh, Boubacar Kamara of Marseille. But there's a dilemma for them. Do they take players on big salaries, potentially big transfer fees as well, with the risk of being relegated? Do those players take the risks of coming to Newcastle? At the moment, it's not leading to a great deal of progress, but we'll see how the coming weeks go. It's a difficult situation at Newcastle, but they've got help in the form of Nick Hammond, who they've appointed on a short-term basis. He was formerly a director of football at Celtic, at West Bromwich Albion, and most notably Reading. He's there for a couple of months to give them some advice. And I exclusively revealed in my Monday column that they've been given permission to speak to Dan Ashworth of Brighton and Hove Albion as part of their process to appoint a permanent director of football. There's no guarantee they'll get him. There's no guarantee they want him. There's a question about why they're leaving it so late. But they are uh, bringing these processes forward. They'll want to get some results on the pitch too. David, as for Manchester United, the other team playing in the match today, you've already made mention of how they've been affected, negatively affected uh, by everything happening with COVID. They haven't played in just over two weeks. What has their manager, Ralph Ragnick, been doing in that time to make an impact with the team? Yeah, just to remind everyone, Paul, Manchester United are in the Premier League. It's the 11th of December since we last saw them play. But Ranić has been settling in behind the scenes. He, of course, posted two Premier League victories and a draw in the Europa League. He's been training his players up. He's been uh, addressing them in video meetings. He's been holding Zoom calls with them. He's been recruiting staff as well. Chris Armas, of course, uh, known to the US audiences from the MLS. Sasha Lenzer, who's come in as a uh, psychologist and uh, uh, a couple of other appointments as well, just to get his feet under the table and get his own people around him. He's had to battle with difficult situations too. Uh, Anthony Martial has told him that he wants to leave the club. Uh, there's uncertainty over the futures of Paul Pogba and Jesse Lingard. But now they get back into action. They've got a real fight on their hands if they're going to finish in the top four. Arsenal are flying. Tottenham have hit some form too. But Manchester United, I think, with those games in hand might well be the favourites. And it's an interesting situation here because if Ralph Ranić succeeds, 
Are Manchester United going to want to appoint him permanently? He would love to do it, I'm sure. But my information is that they are still um, setting the wheels in motion about a new permanent appointment in the summer, the likes of Maurizio Pochettino or Eric Ten Hag. So there's a lot going on at Manchester United on and off the pitch, but he'll just want to continue tonight with a win against Newcastle United, which would make him the first Premier League manager in Manchester United's history if he keeps a clean sheet to do so in their first three games. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch highlights all season long and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend at 7 a.m. Eastern. And for even more content, head over to Peacock, where we've got live games, original series and a dedicated round-the-clock Premier League channel featuring studio shows, classic matches and much more.